Hey guys, today's video is going to be an introduction to Roblox Studio. We'll be going over some of the basic features of the Studio program, such as the Home, Model, and Plugins tab, how to navigate and test your game in the workspace, and finally, at the end, we'll do a little bit of building as well. If you're already comfortable with the Roblox Studio layout, then you can skip ahead to the next video. Let's get started. After we sign in, the first thing we're going to do is choose the place we want to work in. This can be a new place or a place you've already worked in that's saved to your computer. As you can see, Roblox has given us a ton of pre-built options to choose from, but for this video, we are going to choose the new plain baseplate. Once our place is loaded in, we are going to start by opening up some windows that will help us as we create our game. To do this, we are going to click on the View tab at the top of your screen. There's a ton of stuff going on here, but essentially the View tab lets us see all the windows we can have as we work on our game. We are going to select the Explorer, which lets us see all the different aspects of our game. Then the Properties tab, which shows us each part's individual settings. And then Output, which is used for scripting to test our scripts and to see if we have any errors. We will be using output more in a later video. An awesome feature Roblox has is the ability to customize our studio layout. We can drag around these windows and put them wherever we like. Also, we can change the theme of our studio. I normally work with my studio in dark themed, so I'm going to go up here to File, click Studio Settings, then scroll all the way down here to General then to theme and select dark theme. Now that we have our studio the way we want it, let's head over to the home tab and start working. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add a part to our workspace by clicking this part button. Our part automatically appears in front of us on our base plate. If you wanna move, scale, or rotate our part, we can come up here to these first four buttons. We can add other shaped parts to our workspace by going to this little drop down under part and selecting the one we want. Let's see, I'm going to add a sphere. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. If you want to get rid of a part you've added, you can just left click on it and press the delete key or right click on it and select delete from the drop down menu. Now that I have my sphere the right size, I want to change its material and color. I'm going to do this by going up here to the materials option and selecting one. Let's go with slate and let's go over here to color and make it teal. Great. We're all done customizing our part. Now we want to see what it will actually look like to a player playing our game. That's where this next button play comes in. This feature allows us to test our game. If we click on it, we can see that our character is actually teleported into our world and we can run around and interact with things we just created. I can actually push this sphere and have it roll around the base plate. Whenever you want to stop testing, you can just click this big red button and it will bring you back to your original view. Let's say I want to make a gorgeous slate statue to add to my world. So I don't want my sphere to roll away when I run into it. That's where the Properties tab comes in. We'll save most of the options here for another video, but there is one option here that is super important for building and scripting. That option would be the Anchored checkbox. We can scroll down here under Behaviors to find it. This option lets us choose if our part can be affected by physics, players, and other things in the game. If you check this box, it means that your part is going to be glued wherever you put it. And that is exactly what we want for our slate statue. So if we hit test again and try and run into it, it won't go anywhere. If you're having trouble with building something and then hitting play and it falls apart, this is the option you're gonna wanna check. All right, that is about it for the home tab. Let's move on to the model tab. This tab is mainly used when we're building. There is one specific option in here that I want to go over with you guys, 
and that is the snap grid option. You notice when we move our part, it snaps to one of those little squares or studs on our base plate. What if we wanted to move our part half a stud, or maybe two studs? That's when we'd use this option. If we enter 0 0.5, which is half, now our part only snaps half a stud. And if we enter 2, it snaps two studs. The same goes for rotation. If I want to rotate my part exactly 90 degrees, I'd enter 90 and then it would rotate perfectly 90 degrees each time. If you don't want it to snap at all, you can just uncheck these boxes. There are a few things in this tab that we won't be going over in this video, but I highly recommend you to open up your own Roblox Studio and have fun testing them out and seeing what each one does. Next up, we have the test tab. If you want to change how you test your game, you can click on this little arrow under play and choose another option. The play here option will teleport your character to where your camera is looking. So if I zoom in and hit play here, I can see I'm exactly where I want to be. This is really useful when you want to start testing at a specific part in a large map. The run option lets us test our game without actually putting our character in the workspace. This is useful for a few things. I mainly use it when I want to test a script and I don't want to wait for my entire character to load into the workspace. The last thing we're going to cover in this tab is the device option. It lets you see what your game would look like to people on a different device. You can go over here to change which device it shows. I mainly use this when I'm testing UIs, so I know that they look good on all devices. We are going to save this option for a later video, so let's move on to the last tab, which is the plugins tab. Roblox lets us download plugins to help create our games. This tab is where all of those plugins are stored. You can start up a plugin by just clicking on it, and if you want to change any settings about your plugins, like which ones show up or not, you can click Manage Plugins. When we want to save what we've done, we go up here to File, hit Save As, and save it to our computer. I'd suggest saving backups of your workspace every so often as you work on your project. That way, if something happens and you need to easily go back to a previous version, you'll have it all right there and ready to go. You can also enable Auto Recovery to save your work every few minutes. To do that, you can check out Studio Settings under the File tab. All right, now that you guys know the basics of Roblox Studio, I challenge you guys to go create your own statue and have fun playing around with the different features of Roblox Studio. I would love to see what you create. You guys can share your creations to the Simple Games hashtag on Twitter or comment down below and let us all know what you made. <laughs>